Good evening and welcome to Personality Profile here on Joy 99.7 FM. Of course, another Thursday affords us the opportunity to hang out with uh, amazing people who are doing well for Ghana. Yeah, and tonight I have one such important guest on Personality Profile. You know, even though our time on li in this life is temporary, if we live well enough, our legacy will last forever. So what keeps you working hard? Is it the thought that you'll be known for being a wealthy man or having lived life? Or the fact that you could work hard to affect the lives of others or maybe both? You will still be well within your rights if you choose any of these, especially if you have worked as hard as my guest today on Personality Profile. Today, we get to spend time with a, a special businessman who has been through the mill, worked hard to build brands that we engage with on a daily basis. He's an industrialist who has had an amazing business career in the small and medium enterprise industry. He owns and co-founded about six companies, including Special Investments Limited, which is a real estate and investments company, United Two Company Limited, a holding company for U2 Salt Limited, a 600-acre salt mining company, and a refinery in Winneba. United Television, you know it as UTV, Special Ice Limited, Best Point Savings and Loans, Best Assurance Limited, and Best Pensions Trust Limited. His success shouldn't come as a surprise because he's a product of the best school in the world, Presbyterian Boys Secondary School, Presec Lagon. Please help me welcome to Personality Profile, Dr. Ernest Ofori Sapon, who's also the global president of the Odadie Fraternity. Senior Odadie, you're welcome. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> and really good to have you here. How's it going? How's it going? Well, it's been fine. Yeah. Let me put it that way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah it's been fine. I'm, I'm happy that you invited us into your office today. Um, you're a very busy man. I mean, we've been trying to establish contact for a little bit. I, what, I wonder how you keep up. I mean, with all these companies, all these tasks and all, 24 hours, a song there. Well, there's an account probably that says that uh -huh. uh -huh. we we do it. So, I mean, I try to live up to um, the, the, um, all, all the respons my responsibilities yeah. and try to make sure that hmm. I do everything in, in full no, the annual plan they take your time. Which of the which of them takes your time? Um well um I would say specialized. Specialized? Yeah, and then special investments, the real estate companies. Okay. These okay. Two companies. What is our specialized? Because I don't think it's water production, right? Mainly water production. Specialized has got I mean Special, you talk about specialized, you talk about special soft drinks as well. No, okay. we've, got, we've got about three factories, one in Kumase and then two within Accra. Okay. Uh, two within Accra, one produces just water, okay. the other one just soft drinks. So ah. um, you see it as specialized, but they are two different companies. That is special soft drinks and then specialized. Wow. So all the investments that you have, which one are you most passionate about? The real estate. The real estate? Yes. How so? Well, um, real estate is believed to be the number one business in the world. So, I mean, at the end of the day, that is why I invest. So yeah. it's the real estate. It's the real estate. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and you love houses traditionally, yeah? Of course. How many do you have now? <laughs> Let us be, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it that you just can't count or what? I can help um, you count. I can I count them, but I can't tell you the numbers. Okay, give me a range. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it uh, above 100? Let's just be, I won't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, just, I'm just a curious brother, you know. I understand, I'm, I'm but you know, curiosity out. kills the cat. I won't die. <laughs> this cat won't if, die. If you try, you die. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting to know. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure the journey to being Dr. Sapon wasn't as smooth as what it looks now. Uh, so let's get to know it all. Share with us, for starters, though, where you hail from, who your parents are, where did you grow up? I'm, a, I'm from a very small village called Bonfa. Bonfa. My, both parents are from there, my mom and then my late father. This oh. is where so rest in peace. Okay. It's about nine miles away from Kumasi, so I would say I'm a traditional Ashanti. Ashanti. Yeah. Is that where you grew up? No. I grew up in Accra. Were you born in Accra? I was born in Kumasi. In Kumasi. Yeah, but I don't have any vivid memories of when I was living in Kumasi. I think we left Kumasi. My parents left Kumasi when I was about four or five years old. Okay. okay. I started school in Wa. In My, Wa? In Wa, yes. Wow. My father was one of the police commanders for the then special branch, now Bureau of National Investigation, BNI. So okay. 
he kept <coughs> traveling around, you know. He did open most of the branches for BNI. Oh, okay. So we're in why he was the head there. Mm. So that is when I started school. That's what I can remember. From okay. where we came down to Accra, yeah. and then to Tema, and then back to Accra, and then he left the service. So after that, we spent, or oh, I've spent the rest of my life in Accra. In Accra. And what was mom doing at the time? She was into trading and imports. And, Im yeah. and imports? Yes. Oh, okay. So I was going to ask about your import business and all. So it means that mom had already started that? Um, yes. Yes. So it's a family business. Okay. Yeah, if I should put it. It's a family business. It's been a family business, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it safe to say that you had a privileged upbringing at the time? To a certain extent, I would say yes. Mm. Yeah. What was mom... Um, uh, uh, what, you have siblings? I have five other siblings. Five other yeah. siblings. Three, um, four, no, three male siblings and then two, two, two female siblings, yeah. And I'm sure at the time, I mean, your parents could afford a, a bit of the good schools, a bit of the luxury. Um, yes, that is why I went to Presec. That's <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I went to one of the best schools. I yeah. see. So with a, a privilege that bringing of sorts, what are some of the lessons that your parents taught you? To be honest in life, to be dedicated when it comes to work, and then to be also, um, 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 what do you call it? I mean, to <coughs> have that power of sharing when it comes to humanity. Okay. Was there, was there a particular incident you remember and probably in your growing up that helped teach you some of these lessons, something you can share? Um, not, not, not really, not really, yeah, but I mean, I've always had that passion, you know, to, to be, to, to, to share with people what I have, mm. yeah. Was there a specific career path you wanted to chart when you were much younger? Um, I would say yes, yeah, I would say yes. My, my, my idea was not to get into that field of, um, Entrepreneurship. I did science in Presec, and I, I wanted to become probably even a medical doctor or something. Yeah, oh, okay. Then um, you know the family then had its own line of business, and that's the import and export. Yeah, yeah, the import and export trade and all that. So I became, I became acquainted with that, and I don't have regrets though. So after Presec, you moved straight into business. I did. But whilst I was doing business, I did a number of courses and all that, yeah. But yeah. I did, after basic, I moved straight into business. Yeah. Like that, yeah. So the decision to do science, where did it come from? Was, was it just like daddy saying... Uh, because I was young. You see, when you are young and then you take decisions, it's, it's a decision of what you wish you would be. Yeah. But sometimes it could be that it's probably the best of decisions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and daddy didn't have a problem with it. Didn't, didn't he have a, a, a career path he wanted you to chart? Um, I wouldn't say yes. Yeah, he, he didn't really have a career path that I wanted me to take here. Yeah. I mean, he allowed his children to choose their own career path, mm. but I mean, definitely he was guiding us here and there. What, what are your other siblings doing? Most of them are into business. They're also into business? Yeah, yeah. Most of them. Okay. Not all of them, but most of them into business. What's the nature of the import and export business of the family at the time? We were more into garments. Garments? Yeah. Textiles and all that, yeah. And okay. that was... Gents were, I mean, garments, yeah, to be precise. Yeah. Uh, I know you are a, a, a Presbyterian too. Yes, I am. You still go to the Presbyterian Church? I do. Moonsro. You see you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see you. You see you. I'm here. Um, <laughs> well. And I don't care a uh, men's fellowship now. Um, not really. I, I, Dr. Samuel know, Kobiache. I'm in Kobiache. Oh, yeah, sure. Kobiache, I'm in Kobiache. Oh, when last did you go? Oh, just a few months ago. A few months ago. A few months ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that's probably why. I'm a why. Presbyterian. I mean, <coughs> church you are, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so the decision to go to Presec. Tell me about it. Um. Because the one that I directly come after had then gone to Presec. He's Foster. Okay. So he was a year ahead of me. He's 1984 year group. I'm 1985 year group. Ah. I already had a sibling who was there. Okay. So I decided to go there. You also go there. And, yeah. you know, and tell yeah. me about the Presec experience. Presec experience, you know, there's no place like Presec. I know. So if I want <laughs> to talk about it, it's going to take us hours. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, it was a happy place. D during your mm -hmm. time, did you have homos night? We did. What did you do on your homos night? On my homos night, 
Yeah. I remember I recited a poem or something, but I can't remember the poem. Okay. It's been a long time. You better not remember yeah. because yeah. I was going to ask you to yes, recite yes, yes, the yes, poem. Yes. <laughs> yes. They made you recite the no. poem. They didn't let you dress up with your sponge or something and all of those. <laughs> I don't actually remember what I dressed up in, but yeah. I remember I did recite a poem. A poem. Yeah. Wow. Mm. But I and can't remember the poem. What kind of student were you? Were you a... Uh, you know, the, the popular guy in school, or were you a very quiet, unassuming person? Um, you know, I liked, I liked football a lot. So I was a type who would, even after classes, always try to play football with my colleagues. Okay. Yeah, so I was the sportive type. Did you, did you ever hold a position in Presec? In Presec, no, I didn't. Okay, were you a part of the school team as well? The house team, not the school team. The house team, which house yeah. was that? Acro House. Acro House, oh, I see. And then, I played for the house team. You played for the house team. Yeah, I need to say that, I mean, I have, a, I have been on the same team with him. <laughs> There's actually a picture in his office of all of us in the same mm -hmm. jersey playing football. And I've seen you play football as well when we launched the, the AstroTurf pitch on, 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 on the school campus a few, what, a few weeks ago? Yeah, I think in February yeah a few so. months ago. About a few months ago, yeah. yeah, yeah. two months ago, yeah. yeah. That is right, yeah. And we played against the old Black Stars. Yes, yes. And you were the mm -hmm. man of the match. Defense thank you for that. Yeah. that thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you for that. Yeah. yeah, it was quite interesting. Anyway, so let's talk about finishing school. Now you're out of school. There's a family business to take care of. Did they just push you into it? They didn't, but I use that as a platform. So I'm out of that family business now. You're out of that family business. Yes. But let's let's go into the time you were in there. What was your role? What what did you do after school? I was managing, I was importing on behalf of the family, and then at the time I was importing on my own behalf. Okay. Importing goods from countries like um, Hong Kong, China, Thailand, and then Indonesia, and a few other countries. Mm. So I started by importing for the family, and then I branched away and did my importations. Why did you branch away? I wanted to go independent. You didn't want to continue the legacy of the family? Because I had come of age, and I thought that as a man, that should do but as part of myself. succession planning, a lot of families wish that their children will continue their business and, you know, we, we, make we it all, a lot better. I have, I have a younger sister who, has, who, who, who is still in there and who has taken over the mantle of that business. But you were not interested. Family. Well, you see, I wanted to do something different from what the family was doing. And that has led me to open up all these um, 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 factories. And what did you want to do at the time? Well, I, I felt that I could do things bigger and better than what the family was doing. So I branched away from what the family was doing. I'm no longer doing that. And mm. I think I've, to a certain extent, I've reached where I wanted to get to. Would it, wouldn't, wouldn't somebody say that was a very selfish decision? Because if the family has a very big business and you feel that you can do something bigger and better, why don't you take the family business and do it better? but you decide to branch away and do your own. Well, we were many, and we could all not control the family business. So we had to leave it for one person to control. Okay. Or run. Yeah. Mm. So then, uh, what, what was the first thing you did? Um, I got into real estate. Straight away? Straight away, I got into real estate. At what age? A little less than 30. Wow. Mm. I got into real estate, yeah. So I've been in real estate for close to about 25 years, so probably been 28 years. Yeah. Yeah, I got into real estate and then... How did you get into real estate? <laughs> now I'm wondering because you were way well, younger than 20, uh, than 30, like you're saying, and you probably had built some capital, right? Yes, because from I had... From the family business. From the family business, I had, had then built some capital. Do you know how I, much you had at that time? I can't tell. I oh, can't you won't disclose. I, I, um, I don't even no, remember. Today you, today you are trying to hide a few things. but you I, I, I actually don't remember. You don't remember. But what, what I remember was why I got into real estate was um, I had an uncle who was a lawyer. Okay. And he was also into real estate. Yeah. Um, he's Paul Champo. Okay. Kuku Kuku Chimbes, yeah. So he was into real estate. I used to go to his office. We used to live on the same street in Tessano. Mm. So what happened was that he had a son who would close early from school. So whenever I close from town, I would pass by and then probably pick the son, take him home for him. So when I go to his office, he had displayed a number of houses with prices beneath it. So I looked at these structures and then I said, ah, if this house is selling for $200,000, I think I can build at a cheaper price. 
Mm -hmm. I, had, I didn't even build my first house, and I knew how much it would cost. It, oh, you it, had built your first house I already? I had built my first house, so, and I knew how much it cost me to build that house. Yeah. So I looked at the house that I built, let's say, for $150,000, and I could see that the same house my uncle was selling on behalf of some of his clients for, let's say, $250,000. And then why don't I build some and then sell at those prices and then make some money? And that is how I got into real estate. What was your first house like? What house was it? Oh, it was a house that um, I lived in myself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... But later on, I sold it. Was it a story building? Was it a normal... What, what house it was it? It was a story building. A story building. Yeah, How a many single bedrooms? story building. About five bedrooms. Five bedrooms? Yeah. And this was before 30? Before 30, yeah. You built a five-story be bedroom for Not yourself? Not a five-story. Five bedrooms. Yeah, yeah. Five-bedroom yeah. story building yeah. for yourself? Yes. Yes, before 30 I did. Why the, that at that time? Didn't but you think I, I, even, I, I even did build a four-story building within Opera Square, Unity House, at the age of about 28. The building is still there. The building is still there? Yeah. And, and, and that is a building that used to house um, 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 like miracle films and all that, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it's safe to say that you were wealthy at the time. It depends on what you call as wealth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you, if you had two houses <laughs> and one in Oprah Square before 30, then that's, you, you were loaded. <laughs> well, it depends on what you call as loaded. Okay. Yeah. So now that you, you, you decide that, okay, I'm going to get into real estate, and then you started, what, buying lands and then building, building and selling them yeah. in, immediately? Mm -hmm. And making some money. And making some good money? Yeah. Do you remember how much you sold your first house? I don't. You need to eat I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have we, it. We have right problems now. with your memory. It's now. been a long <laughs> journey. Let us, yeah. I know. We're talking about almost 30 years ago. Yeah. So it's been a long journey. Yeah. So I don't remember the figures. Okay, so now real estate is booming. Um, you're building houses. Uh, you're seeing a lot of money. Then you decide to go where else again? Um, then I decided to partner with Dexpite. Then we went into, that was when, in the year 2000, mm -hmm. when, um, President before came in and then he started um, 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 making noise about white gold and all that. Yeah. Yeah. We had challenges at the time with <coughs> um, um, the fluctuating nature of our currency. So, though I was important, you would go buy goods, bring it down, and then by the time you finish selling the goods, the dollar would have shot up. Yeah. So, myself and Despite, we said, look, can we do something that would not involve we having to? change a lot of foreign exchange, I mean, change USD and all that, yeah. yeah. That's when we went into salt mining, U2 salt company. So we formed United Two Company Limited, okay. myself and him. It is still the... Yeah, the salt yeah, mining company. The salt mining company. It's the same company that we use in opening TV station. Yeah. He had, he then had Peace FM. Yeah. Probably as um, Peace FM, OK FM and all that, yeah. Yeah. So when he wanted to get into TV, he invited me and then we formed... Um, we had we already had a company that is U2. The U2 yeah. Salt Company. So we used U2 to acquire the license to open a TV station. Okay. Yeah. So. I, I, I was going to get to this a little bit later, but let's talk about you and Dr. Sergio Amin Despite. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, people think you're twins. <laughs> you, you go everywhere together. There are times you're even wearing matching clothes. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't even know. You're totally inseparable. Where did you meet? Where did we meet? Yes. Um, are you related? We are not related, but for now, I would say we are related. Explain As friends, you, you, you don't necessarily have to call someone your brother just because you come from the same mother or same father with him. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we grew up together, we've done businesses together, and we think together, we do a lot of things together. We have about five or six companies together. So he's my brother. Yeah, so uh, what, what I want to know is, was he a brother from, let's say, school or from the neighborhood or what? Um, no, not from school. Not from school, yeah. He used to trade with us. I mean, he used to buy stuff from our shop. That is the family business. The family business, yeah. okay. Mm. What did he used to buy? Underwears. Underwears? Yeah. Boxer shorts and drawers. Boxer shorts, singlets, t-shirts, wow. all that. And, and, and you thought, oh, he's a great chap. He became friends. That's yes, it. we became very good friends. Very, wow. very good friends. Yeah, Very good friends. And then we became good friends. So what, what really created that inseparable bond? 
Was it because he also thought like you when it comes to business, or there was something else you two had? Uh, uh, you know, agreed he, on? he 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 thought just like me. You know, like I said, when we first opened our first company, we said, "Look, what can we do? Can we get a project or a company that we don't have to even um, 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 import the raw material?" Yeah from outside and sold. We said, look, we can get the raw material from the sea. We don't have to import. You see, we, but even before that, we were traveling together. He was also importing. Mm -hmm. So we would travel together and, I mean, stay in the same hotel and maybe two weeks, three weeks we were together. So we came very close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anytime I have to travel, we would go together. We also, he also had things to do outside. Yeah. So we were always traveling together. Good mm -hmm. stuff. But how are you able to create harmony between the two of you, knowing that it's quite hard to mix business with friendship. It's much more about understanding each other. Yeah. Mm. I think we both have that patience. Okay. We understand each other. Do you, do you ever disagree on anything? On a few times. A, a, a few yeah. times. Was why we disagree to agree? Yeah. What was yeah. the last thing you disagreed about? I can't remember, but it could, <laughs> it, it, it could even have been last week. <laughs> Maybe last week. Maybe last week. Yes. Doc, I, I, you know how phones have flight mode? I mm -hmm. think uh, Doc is on don't remember mode. <laughs> because a few things that you, you just don't want to remember. Anyway, I, I think it's very admirable um, mm -hmm. the way you, you two uh, roll and all of that. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you shared a bit about it. So you, you started the salt mining business. How... How difficult was it in the beginning? It was difficult, especially during the construction stage. Very difficult. What did you have to construct? Pans, ponds, and all that. It's, mm. It involved total civil construction. And you know, for you to be able to develop a salt project, you need land that has, that has clay material, because then you have to pump water onto the ground. If it is sandy, it will sink down. You see, and it's, it's not easy dealing with clay. Mm. We had to go out to buy machines from Holland, from Europe. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <coughs> a whole lot of plant pool. Mm. I know and now it's about, a, about 600 acres? About 600 acres. It took us about three years to complete that project, yeah. Did, did you actually invest in 600 acres in the beginning or you scaled it up? No, we did. We Straight did. away, 600 Straight acres? Away. Yeah, we did. Wow. We did. That was ambitious. Yeah. It was. We were both strong at the time. Okay. So, <laughs> a lot of people went into those type of projects and couldn't complete. But mm -hmm. we did. Yeah, we did. What, what do you think made you s successful with it? Um, our determination to complete. And then the two of us, I mean, each was encouraging the other. Yeah. So if, if I had done it alone, I'm not sure I could have completed it. How many years did it take you to see that you are getting good results? The project was completed after three years. Mm -hmm. And immediately we started harvesting. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it's been good so far. It's been good. It's still running. It's still running. Do you visit the site? We do. Okay. Yeah. But not as often as before. As but before. we do. Right. You've got so people, we have people managing, managing the place. And yeah. all of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But so I'm sure you've seen a lot of our products on yes. the market. You yes. sold. Yes. So now that is running, that's also fending for itself, bringing in some money. Where did you look next? Um, after you two sold, I think um, we did a few projects together in terms of real estate, and then um, then we we looked at Best Point, which is the savings and loan company. After that, we also looked at the insurance market, which is Best Assurance, the general insurance company, which yeah. is still running and doing very well. We also looked at uh, Best Pensions. The pensions, mm -hmm. mm. yeah. But immediately after salt was UTV. Okay. So UTV was our next company. After the source. Even before Best Point. UTV is older than Best Point. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So how do you how do you how do the two of you function when it comes to business? Is it like you sit and you're like, okay, what's next? What do we do next? Okay, where do we go next? Because you, you hardly have any in depth knowledge about these things. But you're like, okay, we are going to set it up and get people to run it. You don't need to be a pilot to run an airline, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so sometimes you employ the service of people who have the technical know-how. Mm -hmm. um, as a businessman, as an entrepreneur, you're able to guide them, then get them to run those businesses for you. What's the challenge with having a mindset like that? 
Um, I wouldn't say there are challenges. It's much more of understanding what you want to do, how you want to drive the business, and then getting the right people to manage those businesses for you. Mm. I see. Uh, which of all these investments are you proudest of? Are you talking about those that I've done with Despite or those that I'm doing alone? In fact, I need to now find out which ones you <laughs> doing and which ones you are doing with Despite. Yeah. Maybe let's start from there. Which ones are you doing alone? Um, I'm into specialized. I'm doing specialized alone. You're doing that alone? Yeah, I'm also into the real estate business. Okay, you're doing the real but estate. But my passion has always been real estate. The real estate yeah. business, eh? Dude, that is, that is where my love is. Okay. Mm. You know, there, I was speaking to a friend the other day and he was like, look, um, looks like you and Despite own half of East Ligon. Have you heard that joke before? Uh, I've well heard that joke, but it's not true. It's not true. Not all jokes are true. <laughs> so, so not yet. You don't own half of we, East we, Ligon we, can, we can't even get there. <laughs> are you sure? Oh, yes, we can't even get Somebody there. Not actually, even 1% of Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm fresh. Sure. Because, I mean, you're driving through East Ligon, and you're like, oh, that's it, the Tassafon building. East Ligon is big. Yeah. East Ligon is big. Yeah. yeah. Mm, so we can't get there. And you're still not willing to tell me how many houses you own. <laughs> I'll count them and come, let you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, interesting stuff. If you just tune in, this is Personality Profile here on Joy 99.7 FM. And today we're spending time with the founder of Special uh, Investments Limited, of course, Dr. Ernest Sapong. He's uh, a proud of that year. He's the president of the Odadia Global Fraternity as well. And we get to spend time with him. We get to know all about his business moves. And, uh, of course, his good friend, Dr. Ose Kwame, despite also came up along the line. Yeah. So, one of the things that I know you're so passionate about is cars. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would go there. <laughs> oh, 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 I had to. <laughs> I had to. You, you love cars. I do. That I must admit. Where, where did the love for cars start from? Um, despite love cars more than myself, so probably it started from his end. Really? Yeah. Uh, how so? Um, cars are nice. <laughs> 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 and it feels good to drive in good cars. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yes, so I just love them. What was your first car? In my first car? Yeah. Can I remember? I was you will remember this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I was during my early 20s. It was, it was a, a Datsun lorry. A Datsun lorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you buy it or daddy bought it for you? I bought it from a friend. In fact, I bought it from my senior brother. From your senior yeah. brother? He used to own it and then I bought it from him. He bought another car and I bought that from him. You, you remember how old you were when you had that car? Um, probably 21 or 22. 22, yeah. about. Mm -hmm. Wow. A Datsun? Lorry. Wow. Yeah. And many years later, what's your favorite car now? Not just one. Many of them. Okay, so which I, ones? I don't have a particular... You don't have a particular favorite? Yeah, favorite, yeah, but... I like, I, I like, I like Bentleys. You like Bentleys? Mm. Ah, I see. Mm. Which one do you own? Bentleys. Yeah? I mean, almost all of them, of course. But which one is your favorite? Which of the Bentleys is your favorite? Oh. The Bentega is a nice car. Okay. Bentley Bentega is a nice car. How many cars do you have? I don't remember. Okay, so... Oh, I can't even remember. You, 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 you know, that sounds actually worse <laughs> than what you're trying to do. Why? Like, you, you don't know the number of cars you have. Like, you can't remember the number of cars. That, that's that's not cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, personal cars. Personal cars. I can't tell. You can't remember. Yeah. Maybe around 20 or something. Okay. You, you, you Maybe around know 20. the number. Mm. Personal cars, probably around 20. Must be nice. See you. <laughs> yeah. And I, I've seen you own a few antiques as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if, if you were to choose an antique, which one would you go for? Um, I have the Bentley X2. It's a 1961 Bentley. 
1961 Bentley. Yeah. Ah, how long have you had that? For about four years. About four years. Yeah. So you're more like a collector? Not really. Not really. I, I, I don't have a lot of antique cars. I have just two. Just two? Three, but three. Okay. Yeah, I have three antique cars, yeah. Yeah. So I'm not a collector. Mm. Okay. But I have a few antique cars, just about three of them. I see. <laughs> let's, let's, get to, let's get to meet your family. I know you're married and you've got kids. Uh, tell us about them. Well, I've been married for about, um, is it 29 years? My first kid, it's, um, her name is Cindy Forisa, and she holds a um, doctor of pharmacy. She just got married about a year ago. Okay. So about yeah. six or so months ago, yeah. She holds a doctor of pharmacy. Yeah. And then the second one also is a lawyer by profession, mm. Mandy Forisa. And the third one, also a lady, is in her CV at medical school. Okay. So. These are the three. And, and, and your wife, where did you meet your wife? Where did I meet her? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a nice question. <laughs> <laughs> in Accra here. In Accra? Yeah. At what point in your life? When I was 25. What were you doing at the time? The family business? Yes. Yeah. So how did you meet her? Oh, <laughs> in town, you know. How? How? I met her, I mean, I, I did know her elder sister, so I met her through her elder sister. Yeah. She used to, I mean, live in London and then sometimes she would come for holidays. So when she came for holidays, I said, no, I won't let you go back again. You just saw that you won't let her go back yeah, again? again, yeah. So yeah. You are my life partner. And that was that it? Is, that was it, yeah. So we dated for about three or four months and then we got married. After three months? Three or four months, I can't remember, yeah. That was fast? Maybe. What was the deal breaker for you so that you, I mean, nowadays a lot of the young men, they did for like seven, eight years and they, mm. they, they are with eh? yeah. 10 years, no, yeah. no more. So, eh, 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 I wasn't that type, I was a serious person. Mm. And I also didn't want to go with what I'm not saying that those who are not married are going with, but I felt that I need to be more responsible. So okay. I should get married. So, so after I got three married. months, four months? Three, four months, yeah. You're like, let's get married. Mm. I had known her for some time, but we were not dating, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but when I took the decision, and then I proposed to her, it took us about three or four months to get married. What do you think has kept you together? Um, our patience, my patience for her, her patience for me, mm. and then our loyalties. What role does money play in the success of, of your marriage? Success of my marriage, I think it's much more about love, not not money, because. When I met her at that time, I didn't have what I have now. So I don't think that is what has played a role. Mm. Mm. It's Good much stuff. more of how you love each other. Yeah. If you had to advise anybody about marriage, what would you tell them? About marriage. Marriage, marriage, um, well, you, you both partners need to have patience for each other. There are times that one party will offend the other party, but I mean, if... I would say that, let's say, 90% of the things that you do are good, 10% may not be right. But you should understand that on <coughs> balance of scale, the 90 should overweigh the 10. Yeah. So you should always not look at the 10, look at the 90. Yeah. Your, your children, you mentioned one is into pharmacy, one is a lawyer, one is in the medical school now. Yeah, right. Um, do you hope that any of them would... <laughs> you know, he, I see that smile on your face. I know, you know I where know, it's going. I know, I know where it's going. <laughs> any of them will take after me. Any of them will handle my business. Yes. Like yeah. Time will tell, but most likely. You, you hope that will happen? Well, definitely. definitely. How would you feel if at some point they decide to do what you did and say, oh, well, I don't want to handle this business. I want to chart my own course. Well, I'm not too sure that would happen. But if ah. it does, <laughs> if it does, I'm sure there are people there to look after the businesses. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you, I'm sure you can always employ service of other people too. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Now let's let's talk. With all that you've been through when it comes to business, you've had very high moments and all. Um, would you recall any low moments when it comes to business? Low moments, um, not really. If, if I should have any low moments, I would say with the salt. 
with the salt? Yeah, initially, when we started, um, we didn't know it to be that tedious. I mean, then I had to leave my family at a point and then spend most of my time in Winneba. Rented a house there, and so for about three years, I spent much more time in Winneba than in Accra. It took part of my time, you know. Mm. So those are some of my um, um, low moments. I will not say I have regrets, but I mean, we went through hell in trying to put up that yeah. Yeah, factory. So it's safe to say that you've not failed at any business? No, you have not, not for now. Yeah. No. If there was a business advice you'd give people who are starting up, what would it be? Oh, they should, they should just try to um, do a bit more um, um, feasibility study before they enter into any venture. Mm. A bit more feasibility study? Yeah, and uh, okay. yeah, try to understand the business yeah. more before they start anything. Mm. What, what kind of entrepreneur are you? What kind of leader are you? Um, the type who sees anyone that I work with as a brother or a sister. Mm. I see. Because I believe that um, having people around you is like having a family around you. And then I, I believe in where, I mean, I work with people and I see them as part of myself and part of the business. Yeah. Has anybody let you down before? Definitely a few people. In business? Um, yes. You know the normal Ghanaian mentality. Sometimes what? people come in and then they disappoint you. What's the normal Ghanaian mentality? The normal Ghanaian mentality is that there are times people um, are unemployed, you employ them, and then when they come in, they don't live up to expectation. They think differently. Is it? The approach to work, mm -hmm. the, the approach to certain things makes it a bit disappointing. Is it laziness? or a lackadaisical ap approach? Both, lazy lackadaisical and then the father sometimes, they even want to outwit you in terms of so many things. Ah, uh, right, I see. So th there's always been those challenges here yeah. and there, yeah, but we would sail through. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. If we were to talk about your proudest moment or what you are proudest of in your life, what would it be? My proudest moment. Yeah. Many of them. Share some My with successes. Us. Yeah, share mm. some with us. A lot. Oh, just a couple of them. That's fine. Oh, anytime I open up a new company, I see that's an achievement. Yeah. Mm. One of them is when we, the, the very first day that we launched special, um, Specialized, the day that we launched um, Best Point. Yeah. So many things, yeah. Mm. There's been a lot of proud moments. Mm. What's your biggest regret? In life. Not that I can think of, yeah. What's your greatest fear? Fear. <laughs> well, I don't have any great fear. I, I mean, I can't think of anything. You can't think of any fear? Really. Mm. Yeah, not really. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I try to, I mean, move away from trouble. So I, I, I don't think of any such thing, yeah. But this could happen to me, mm. yeah. apart from sickness. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I know, I know uh, since you mentioned sickness, I know you keep fit a lot. Right. You play a lot of football. Do you still do that? I still do it. How often? At least twice in a week. Twice in a week you still play football? At least. Ah, right. Mm. Our very own uh, Sami Kufo. <laughs> One of the best defenders in the yes. world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I saw a, a jersey of Kufour from Bayern Munich in your office. Yeah. yeah. I'm a defender, so I like defenders. You like defenders. So you can see two jerseys here. Yeah. One from Sami Kufour and one also from Marcel Desailly. Marcel Desailly. They, they are both world-class defenders. Definitely. What, what team do you support? I don't support a particular team. Hey. Mm -hmm. Really? Yes. How so? How so? I enjoy so enjoy the game. No team at all? No. Not even Kumasi Asante Kotoko? Oh, Kotoko, I would say yes. When you talk about local teams, I would say then Kotoko. Yeah. But, I mean, for Premiership and then um, La Liga and all that. I don't have a particular team that I support. Team that you but support. When you come down here, then I will say Kotoko. Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Yes. Anyway, 
I mean, I'm, I'm totally enjoying my conversation with you here today. Uh, it's, it's interesting getting to know a little bit more about you mm -hmm. and your business acumen and all. Uh, last year, you were inducted as the president of the Odadia Global Fraternity, and I'm sure uh, you are also as excited as we all are, uh, knowing that you, you're a champion in the course of Odadia as the world over. Uh, we met at the launch of the AstroTurf that you donated to per second or I, I don't know whether you want to say something about per second and, and your role now. Well, um, I will start by thanking those who elected me or even those who nominated me for me to be elected into power as a global president of per second or that year fraternity for that matter. And um, I want to assure the whole fraternity or that year fraternity. I want to assure the whole or that year fraternity that um, <coughs> I will not disappoint them. Our predecessors did very well. That is Reverend um, Dr. Malkwe and his team. And we want to continue from where they left off. My, 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 I mean, my vision is to take Presec to wherever we need to take it to. I mm. mean, Presec now is the school of people's choice. Presec now is the envy of everybody. And like I said earlier, there's no place like Presec. Yeah. There is not about the time that we have to let the other day fraternity down. So we live up to expectation myself and then my administration. Yeah, and we'll make sure that we'll build upon what our predecessors did. And then when it comes to even the science, mass and science schools, we'll move from six to oh, a lot right. of seven, a, a eight, nine, ten. Yes, a much <laughs> bigger, probably a, a double digit. Number. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Leave, yeah. Let's talk about seven mm. now. <laughs> we're done with six, so we're talking about seven, seven. now. Yeah. Amazing. I'm sure seconds would like to hear this. Uh, mm. So now I want us to talk about your impact in society. Uh, you've done so well. You've employed a lot of people. Uh, you're a business leader. People look up to you. Have you had calls to get into politics? A number of them, but I've not never shown interest. Why? I'm a businessman, and I want to disassociate myself from politics. What will associating with politics do? Nothing much, but it's just my decision to disassociate myself from politics. You don't think that you would uh, be able to serve your people better in a political position? It depends. But currently, I think I'm doing my best. And where I have to serve the people, I'm serving them. And a good example is that I sit on a COVID-19 trust fund. And it's also a matter of serving the people of Ghana. Mm. Mm. You do I, don't, I, don't, I don't see that as a political position. Yeah. Mm. You do also, there were calls for you to stand for president of Ghana, would you? <laughs> for now, I'll say no. <laughs> for now? Yes, I won't, I won't say. I, in fact, I don't have plans. I don't you don't have, have presidential future. ambitions? I don't. At all? I'm a president. <laughs> I'm talking about president of Ghana. But I'm a president. His Excellency. <laughs> I'm president of the global or that different. <laughs> <laughs> so I also have that title. I'm, you, I'm, I'm you're content. president. Yes, I'm content with that. With that one. <laughs> but maybe yeah. after your term, then we come. Okay, yes. His Excellency, the president of Ghana, Dr. Enes uh, Ferisapo. No, I don't have any political ambition. Do you have a thing against politicians? No, not at all. Not at all. Most of them are my friends. Mm. Mm. <laughs> we can't live without them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the political landscape in Ghana? Um, it's good. It's acceptable. It's accept acceptable? Yes, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have Certain a countries are worse. It's acceptable. I think it's good. To you, me, you, I you're think. fine with how politicians run the country? Yes. The most, the most important is that we have our peace. To me, that is... That is what is most important. Mm. People have bemoaned corruption and, and how, you know, the country is being run and all of that. You don't have issues with that as well? Um, you don't pronounce somebody guilty until the person is found guilty, isn't it? Yeah, so I wouldn't sit here and say that there's a certain level of corruption. I, don't, I haven't seen anything, unless you have. Mm -hmm. uh, did COVID... You're sitting on the, the, the COVID fund as, as chairman. As a trustee. As a trustee. Uh, what do you think about how we handled COVID? We've handled it very well. 
very, very well. And you, you can realize that currently um, the, <coughs> the, the, the rate is down. I mean, COVID is down here. We are, we are enjoying a lot of peace. Today, I had a friend in my office, and he said that I think in two days' time, India is coming under lockdown. Yeah. At Ghanaians, we should be happy that we are all living and going about our duties mm. normally. Mm. Did it affect your business in any way? It did. It did. How so? I mean, almost every sector. COVID has affected almost every sector of business. When it comes to um, specialized, you know, I mean, there are no major public gatherings like funerals and all that. So it's only during such gatherings that people buy a lot of water. So if there are no gatherings, definitely there will be an effect on your sales. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People don't go to the stadium like before, mm -hmm. so there will be an effect on you. How did you cushion yourself in that period? Did you have to also <coughs> uh, cut down on jobs and all of those? A little. You did? A little, yeah. We did have to cut down on jobs. A little. A few people. I see. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's been amazing spending time with you. Uh, a lot of young people look up to you. Uh, you inspire a lot of people. If you had to advise or you'd have to share a word, what would it be? I would just ask, I mean, for the young people, I would say that um, they should just, I mean, strive hard to attain their goals. I mean, they, they, they should, that, they should um, be more determined, yeah, in trying to achieve what they are aiming at, yeah. There is nothing like failure in life, yeah. It's just like education. Failing one paper doesn't mean you should lose hope, yeah. So even when you enter into any field and then you are facing challenges, just be sure that um, you are able to overcome those challenges and then be successful. So what I want to say is that people should, or the young guys should strive hard to attain their goals, they should be more determined and then understand that there's nothing like being discouraged when it comes to business. Strive hard to achieve your goals. Don't be discouraged. You will get the setbacks, but more importantly, strive hard and work hard mm -hmm. and you will be successful. Words from Dr. Mm -hmm. Enet Sapong here on Joy 99.7 FM. I need to say thank you so much for spending time with us. It's been a great conversation. I've enjoyed hanging with you. And we're also grateful for all the words of advice that you shared today on Personality Profile. Thank you, Ladies B, yes, for having sir. me on your show. Yes, I'm excited I'm grateful. about it. Thank you so yeah. much. Thanks thank to my you. man, Chris yeah. Agobo, pulling it off. Yeah, and all the or daddies who are tuned in right now. I'm Nexus Bill. It's been a great conversation with Dr. Enes Ose Sapong. You can check out videos on our Facebook page. You can get online and you can get a full recap of the conversation that we are having here on myjoyonline.com. Next week, Thursday, we'll bring you another great conversation on your super station. Have a great evening. Thanks to my production team, to Clement and the technical team as well, our cameraman who actually made it possible. You are so wonderful. God bless you and have a great evening.